Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for introduction. And, uh, I'm uh, Dan Dong from uh, Iowa State University. And uh, uh, it's great a pleasure to uh, give my presentation about uh, paint and the soil and how sensors, microphone dividers can be used in this regard. And uh, so my, the outline of my talk uh, basically is uh, here, a plant chip for uh, plant phenotyping and the chip scale uh, nutrient uptake measurement and then uh, uh, soil nutrient measurement, leaf water transpiration measurement and then uh, screening devices for nematode drug screening, drug resistance. So if you look at this uh, uh, global microfluidic device market breakdown by application, you can find that uh, you know, most of the applications are focused on uh, biomedicine, healthcare, and uh, environment, environmental monitoring. So microfluidics and the sensors uh, compared to other applications have been relatively under-researched and under-applied to plant sciences. And our culture that actually has very huge social and economic impacts. And so farming has been going on for several thousands of years. Until recent centuries, traditional farming always relies on uh, tiling the field to get them ready for planting, planting the seeds, and then uh, waiting. Hopefully, you know, it rains enough to produce a crop. And in recent years, the engineering and the science of uh, agriculture has been uh, advanced. Uh, for example, hybrid seeds of selective variety of uh, single crop equipment and uh, lots of energy uh, subsidies, for example, you know, irrigation, uh, fertilizers, and uh, pesticides are synergized to uh, forming the modern uh, agriculture. In the recently, precision agriculture relies on sensors, uh, drones, satellites uh, to obtain data about uh, phenotypes of plant, for example, the uh, stem size, leaf shape, biomass, so on and so forth. So my interest is in uh, applying sensor and micro technology for plant phenotyping. So what is the phenotype of a plant? Basically, it's about uh, uh, how a plant looks and how a plant performs. Uh, how plant looks, basically, it's about the stalk size, uh, plant height, leaf angle, biomass. How it performs, basically, it's about uh, you know, how plant uptake nutrient, how plant uptake water, and so on and so forth. And the uh, phenotype is uh, basically a function of uh, uh, both genotype and the environment. You have many types of genotype, you have many uh, environments, so the interaction between genotype and environments are really complicated. So phenotype is an interaction uh, between genotype and uh, environment. And different genotype translate to uh, different environments. This makes uh, the complexity more complex. Okay. And um, uh, there are lots of efforts ongoing to develop models to understand how environmental stresses, uh, abiotic, biotic stresses affect uh, crop growth Phenotype and then predict uh, yield, and also provide uh, best recommendations to the farmers regarding uh, irrigation, fertilizers, and pesticides. Uh, so, right now, uh, there are many ways to get uh, uh, plant phenotype measurement, for example, greenhouse in the growth chamber, uh, moving plants, classify imaging area, or you know, pulling out plant to measure the root length, and uh, I put that to the scale to get the weight of uh, the plant. And then, you know, uh, to create the environment, uh, people use greenhouse in the chamber and uh, setting up a huge robot in the field to get the uh, image uh, taken. And uh, also, you know, uh, send uh, drones uh, up to the sky to take images of that. And uh, uh, so this is a traditional way. And uh, uh, one of uh, my previous work is about uh, growing plant on the device on the chip. And obviously, we are not growing corn or soybean on the chip. We are growing model plant. It's called a Rhabdopsis. The Rhabdopsis is uh, very small. It's um, uh, it has uh, the seed is like uh, less than one millimeter. So for microbiotic sensor people, you know that's good. And uh, uh, also, this plant has uh, a relatively small genome. You know, uh, several thousands uh, genome. 
And uh, it goes very quickly, you know, um, uh, from uh, planting seed to flowering, it uh, takes about uh, four weeks you know, around that. So on our device, we uh, load the very tiny uh, seed on uh, the device and the seeds are here. So they are sitting in a funnel-like structure and we say that the seed, uh, seed uh, side. And uh, um, we use microfluidic methods to get them, you know, to those uh, uh, seed inside and then change the condition of uh, their growth or their growth, the temperature, uh, chemical, and other, uh, uh, even biological uh, environment. So then uh, we put the device vertically and we call that vertical microfluidic chip. And uh, on the device, you can see how uh, plant uh, roots go downward and how you know, shoots going upward. And uh, since the device is transparent, so you can see uh, you know, their growth over time. And uh, more interestingly, later you can see that we can put some uh, uh, fancy stuff in there to see the interaction between uh, plant and the other uh, uh, species. So um, the concept is very simple. And uh, uh, so we first load the seed uh, using microfluidic map. As you can see here in this uh, video, we put the seed at uh, the in inlet and then you know, apply the negative pressure on the other side so that uh, the seed can be loaded into uh, the seed inside. And then the uh, side of uh, each uh, uh, seed inside basically is about, uh, uh, it's quite small, you know, it only allows one uh, seed to be loaded there, and the other seed will just pass by that to the next seed site. So with that, you know, uh, there will be no contamination issue during handling, and the uh, uh, seed will not get damaged during handling. Okay. So then you can observe what's going on there, you know, for example, at different uh, chemical condition, how they grow. Uh, in this particular example, we have uh, Y-type uh, aerobiopsis, and they grow different at uh, different chemicals. And using the robot that we set up in the lab, you can, you know, see, you know, their, their, their growth over time. And then we send the, the image data to uh, my collaborator, um, and then you know she can uh, do some imaging processing to find out uh, the root length, uh, uh, latent uh, hypercatal, you know this type of uh, uh, plant organs, uh, how they grow over time. And uh, then uh, we also you know do uh, did a phenotyping on the device. Basically, we uh, uh, put different uh, uh, strains of uh, uh, seed into the device. You know uh, these uh, seed are. Uh, 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 mutants, so um, they grow differently even under the same conditions compared to the white type. As you can see here, you know this is a, this is a, 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 a mutant uh, aerolopsis, and the other one here is. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have pointed out. This. I was using my <laughs> fingers to point that. Right. So this is a, a white. Uh, this is a mutant, the other one is a uh, white type, and you can see even though they grow uh, under the same condition, they have different phenotypes. And then you may ask a question, you know, how plants grow on the chip uh, compared to uh, plant growth in the traditional uh, method. Yeah, so you can see if you look at this carefully, then the conclusion is that uh, they uh, the growth timelines for plant growing on a chip is uh, comparable to that growing on the uh, conventional plates. So we are okay with uh, uh, this result, and then that's why we are using the device for large scale screening. And then you may ask the question, you know, on the device, uh, the uh, space is so small, then how can you get them, uh, uh, how can you do lots of uh, measurements? And so when they grow very high, you can open up the top surface of the device to let them grow up, and you can further do screening in the measurements. Also, on the device, you can see the interaction between pathogen and the plant. You know, uh, when um, symptom actually is uh, not uh, uh, available if uh, they were grown in uh, in the soil. Okay, and on the device, you can see directly what's going on at the, the seed uh, at the root area due to the interaction. And uh, then uh, we uh, did some uh, uh, work further to uh, uh, phenotype uh, uh, plants or or uh, Roblopsis at large scale. So we set up our robot. We 
lactic uh, concentration uh, generator, a gradient generator to produce different concentration. And we also put some sensors in here to monitor the oxygen uh, you know, and the CO2 in the chamber and um, uh, also you know, optimize the, uh, the chip to overcome the evaporation issue during the growth. And uh, uh, these are ongoing work. And uh, uh, yeah, so and we did some uh, screening work about uh, how uh, you know, environmental uh, condition affects the growth. For example, in this particular case, so we changed the hormone uh, concentration in the solution to see how that affects the growth of uh, raw boxes. All right, so uh, this is the plant chip. And uh, on the chip, what else we can do? Uh, we also do the next thing, which is uh, we want to see how plants uptake the nutrient. And um, so year to year uh, weather uh, variability uh, will affect the crop yield and the yield stability of the crop. Okay? And so farmers would like to put uh, a sufficient amount of uh, fertilizer to ensure the growth is yield is high, but you know that will cause some environmental effects. So um, then, you know, plant scientists, biologists say, you know, what if we get a better, you know, crop which has an improved nutrient use efficiency, especially they are looking at the nitrogen use efficiency, uh, because uh, if the nitrogen use efficiency is high, then uh, that, uh, you know, plants don't require uh, uh, much uh, fertilizer, so that will reduce the negative uh, externalities. And um, people also think that genotype that maximize the nutrient use efficiency are likely to uh, promote the yield stability. So on the chip, we did a measurement about how plants uptake uh, the nutrient. The way we did it is like this. So the setup is quite simple. Uh, you have a growth chamber sitting on the top of a substrate. There's a glass, and you set uh, just <laughs> unselective electrodes-based sensor down here. And uh, uh, this is a, a sensitive membrane, uh, a selective membrane, and we put the mesh right on the top. So the plant is growing up over here. And then, you know, uh, uh, we know, you know, the growth medium uh, ingredients and their concentration as time goes, uh, the concentration in here, uh, for example, um, uh, nitrate or uh, phosphate, the concentration decreases, which indicates, uh, you know, the uptake of uh, nutrients by the plant, right? So using this simple uh, setup, you can know how much uh, uh, nutrients are uptaken by the plant. So this is uh, uh, our idea. And uh, then on the device, you have um, we have uh, you know several uh, unselective, yeah, unselective electrode-based uh, sensors. And uh, put, uh, by the way, this is not uh, raw opposites, This is rice. And uh, uh, of course, the early stage rice. You know, if you go to my lab, you can see corn, soybean, uh, rhodopsis, and the rice. I'm in the electrical engineering department, though. And uh, so you can see the, the growth of the roots and setup of uh, the device. Right. So um, you know, over time, you can see the rice growing nicely, and uh, uh, then we characterize our sensor to get to the concentration curve regarding the output uh, versus uh, the uh, uh, nitrate and uh, uh, double hydrogen phosphate concentration. And then uh, selectivity testing just to show you know, the device is okay with uh, uh, selecting uh, uh, nitrate and the double hydrogen phosphate in our particular case here. And then, uh, 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 so here, this is a 15-day measurement result. And, uh, uh, so here, this is the first day, and then you can see the uh, concentration reduction in the chamber over time, and then we just play with uh, uh, the nutrient, and then we basically we uh, replenish the chamber with uh, fresh uh, nutrient, and then you see the same pattern, right, going down and going up and going down like that. So this is for nitrate, the other one is for phosphate. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, we also made a comparison between sensor output with uh, traditional uh, method, which is uh, uh, ion chromatography, and uh, this result they seem uh, okay. And um, 
Yes, so this is on chip scale measurement, and we also run some uh, field. Uh, uh, we, we, we also worked on uh, making uh, sensors for uh, in field uh, measurement of uh, nitrate uh, and other nutrients. So traditionally, you know, farmers go to the field, they get the stock, and also get uh, the soil, and send that, send that to the lab to get the measurement of uh, nitrogen and uh, other uh, nutrients. And the, our method here is uh, electrophoresis, so it's a well-known method, and we take advantage of uh, uh, ion separation to uh, measure the uh, uh, separated ions from the soil water, and then. Uh, uh, um, get the result about uh, the concentration of nitrate in the extracted soil water. So um, the operation of uh, uh, electrophoresis uh, basically it's a simple so it's a cross type of, uh, channel and know the, the extracted soil here and then apply the voltage uh, to, uh, in, to 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 deliver the uh, ions into the channel or into this area and apply voltage. Uh, another voltage to get the uh, example here uh, moving uh, forward so that the ions will be separated as they move along the separation channel. And then we put a conductivity measurement circuit over here to check the presence of uh, these uh, separated ions. So pretty much that's the, the principle. And um, uh, so basically it relies on uh, soil water extraction and um, uh, the voltage to separate them and then see the presence of uh, the ions um, using conductivity measurement circuit. So this is our circuit, it's uh, straightforward. And uh, then uh, this is our soil water sampler uh, where we can see, you know, uh, this is a porous nanoporous uh, suction head and uh, uh, apply vacuum to get to the uh, soil water from the soil and then uh, deliver the sample into collector. And this is a collector on the chip. So this is uh, the uh, electrophoresis chip. And uh, this head over here is a suction head for the soil water sampling and it's inverted into the soil. So efficiency, yes. Um, uh, extraction efficiency basically is a function of uh, soil water potential, right? So you can see if the soil is high, then, uh, the rate will be low. If it's wet, then the extraction efficiency will be high. And as time goes, you may be curious that whether or not the the extraction head will um, get sucked uh, by the soil particle uh, because uh, the uh, pores at the uh, ceramic head is really tiny. So it's about uh, 50 to 100 nanometer. So that will basically serve as a filter to build out those larger particles. So. Uh, that's why over time, uh, for example, after 100 times measurement and suction, you'll see, you know, uh, a slight reduction of the suction rate, but uh, overall, that's fine. So we characterize our sensor, this calibration curve. In particular, we are interested in the nitrate, so that you see the, uh, uh, at the, um, uh, over here, you see at uh, about 170, or 175 seconds, so you see the presence of the peak, and this indicates the, the nitrate. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, depending on the um, height of the peak, amplitude of the peak, you can see the concentration. Uh, yeah. And then we did the uh, measurement, this is uh, uh, testing the real soil sample. Nitrate, which is our main interest, and other, we also can see other nitrate, uh, other ions. Then we send our sample to the field, uh, send our devices uh, like this to the field, and then do the field measurement. And this is uh, our team. And uh, then this is the uh, 60 day, uh, 60 day uh, field testing data. And uh, uh, basically, you know, uh, the number here indicates. Uh, the uh, uh, fertilizer application rate and uh, uh, 0, 150, and 300 pounds per acre. And uh, you can see, you know, uh, the uh, measure the result actually quite uh, consistent, especially for these over time. Okay. So 
uh, this is our soil measurement. And then we also are interested in measurement of uh, the uh, 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 water uh, transpiration from the leaf, uh, uh, evaporation from leaf, basically we made a leaf uh, relative humidity sensor to see the, um, the change of uh, local relative humidity at the leaf uh, when you uh, uh, water the plant, okay? And you want to see at what time uh, the water actually gets to the leaf, okay? Because uh, at the back of the leaf, there are so many uh, small holes, it's called stomato, and uh, they will open. So when they open, then the water exits from the back side of the leaf so that the local humidity changes. And you use a simple sensor to check the uh, presence of the change, or to check the change of the humidity. All right, so uh, what's on uh, the uh, tape, uh, device uh, basically is a tape, and this tape is a porous tape. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, gas and water permeable tape, and we put graphene oxide on that because that's the material for uh, um, uh, absorbing water and aggregating water and um, uh, the electrical resistance of this material changes with uh, uh, the water uh, vapor level at uh, the device. And uh, so we uh, uh, made the uh, uh, paper-based uh, relative humidity device uh, sensors. And uh, the our method basically is about uh, uh, taping, taping, taping. And uh, the, uh, uh, the method here basically is uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you have a PDMS mode that you put a uh, uh, graphene suspension over there and then you get, get a cast, uh, casted graphene film and then tape out uh, uh, the unwanted material from the top and then you get padding into, into uh, you get, you get uh, you know, graphene uh, structures uh, or padding in the mode and then you use uh, another tape to you know, put on that and then tape it out to get the, the uh, pattern and this method allows you to get the five micron resolution. So which is good. You, know, you can create a different uh, uh, this method. And uh, as for the measurement, we put our sensor at the back of uh, the leaf, and uh, this is uh, this is a reference sensor. And uh, we we, we want to see you know uh, how the local moisture or relative humidity changes over time if you water the plant. Okay, so. Uh, we did the uh, measurement like this. So we put two sensors on two different leaves, so one on the lower leaf, the other one on the up leaf, and then we water the plant. Okay, so in this uh, uh, genotype uh, B73, uh, this is a corn maize, and uh, at uh, the time of like 80 minutes, so you see the presence, uh, you see the change of uh, local humidity, of oh, relative uh, humidity, the change, and uh, which indicates that the water gets to the back of the leaf. And, uh, then uh, the, 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 the up sensors uh, uh, reported uh, uh, the presence of uh, reported a relative humidity change over here at this time. So it indicates that, okay, so after 80 minutes, you will see the water actually from here to here, right? And in the other case, we, uh, um, this is another uh, uh, plan. Uh, this, is, oh, this is also corn, but it has mixed genetic stock in there. So it's not the B73, and in this particular case, you have a 28 minute uh, transporting time, okay, for water from lower to upper. All right, so um, let me quickly finish the last portion. It's about uh, uh, chemical resistance measurement of uh, nematodes. So uh, in North America, more than 60 species of uh, plant uh, parasitic nematodes are known to feed uh, on corn. And uh, so they cause lots of problem for agriculture, and the people use uh, chemical to uh, control them. So it's uh, like a chemical uh, chemotherapy. And uh, but you know those nematodes already develop the drug resist resistance. So the question is how can we test the people have used the um, um, imaging uh, method to uh, track the uh, movement of nematodes when they are exposed to different chemicals. Uh, but this is uh, not accurate. So we are interested in looking at the muscle force generation of the nematodes as they are exposed to uh, different chemicals. So in our so, and we want to measure the uh, force generation um, uh, of the nematodes due to this uh, due to this uh, uh, exposure to, to the chemicals. 
So our method here basically is uh, relies on a yeah. uh, 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 here and keeps this cantilever in power. And then uh, this cantilever basically is uh, a, uh, a single mode optical fiber, you know, and this fiber you know, gets hit and uh, go deflecting. Uh, to this side, so that uh, the light passing through here will uh, not completely uh, get to the detector. So uh, you'll see uh, the coupling, uh, optical coupling change at this uh, here uh, detector. So uh, if I see this, uh, yeah, come over here, hits the bar, and then going yeah to the next uh, uh, detection point. And uh, so you'll see the change of uh, you'll see the change of uh, uh, light coupling due to due to the deflection of uh, the uh, optical fiber. And then by looking at uh, the deflection um, due to uh, the interaction between uh, nematode and uh, cantilever, you can you can see. Uh, Or this uh, uh, the optical uh, power over here as a function of the force. So uh, I think I, yeah, yeah. So then we use uh, the device for uh, measuring the force generation by the nematode, the different types of uh, uh, nematodes when they exposed to the chemical, which is a levamisole. And then you can see the force generation actually different for this particular uh, nematode uh, with, uh, compared to the other uh, nematode. Uh, actually, they are the same nematode, but uh, they, 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 they are different strains. Okay. So you can see the uh, force generation difference. Okay. So I will stop here. And uh, uh, my conclusion is that we developed this uh, on chip scale. Uh, Plant growth station, and then we did uh, the measurement for uh, nutrient uptake of a plant, and then we made a device for uh, soil uh, nutrient measurement, and then we also made the device for water evaporation measurement from the leaf. So, in the uh, nematodes uh, drug resistance measurement, and my uh, I would uh, thank my funding agency and the students and uh, collaborators. Thank you.